Hi everyone, this is Editing Taro coming to you live from my cage. Someone please let me out. I'm suffocating. I just have to tell you something, first of all. This video was filmed during my shift <laughs> at my internship. We were told to work at home and that is why you constantly hear the teams pinging in the background because again, I had one brain cell during that shift and I did not think about hitting silent at any point in the video and i also when i was filming this uh video like when i was making this list i did not think about putting them into categories either until literally halfway through the video <laughs> like you can even see the point at which i realized that all of the books actually fit neatly into their own categories and of course i edited this video as if that was the plan all along because i can't let people know that i'm the most fucking unorganized and stupid youtuber on planet earth i thought i would put this as kind of like a preface to what you're about to see just to give some context you know i thought that was really important and I hope you enjoy. Wow, the sky is so blue outside. So of course, I have to sit inside and record a video. So if you've seen my latest video, then you know that I am currently in Sydney, Australia. And what that means is that I now am southernmost part of the world this way of the equator than I used to be. Which means that I am currently experiencing spring yet again. And if you've seen all of my other videos, then you know that spring is always a hellscape for me. I am hoping to survive this spring though, because I am hoping that the drought will continue and kill all plants in the whole world. But even though I am currently experiencing spring, doesn't mean that everyone else is. Everyone else, in fact, is experiencing fall. If all the booktube um, fall book recommendation videos are any hint. I was thinking, why not be in on the trend? Let me just pretend I'm still on the north side of the equator. You know, give everyone my recommendation list for this coming fall. Well, it's not coming. We are in the literally in the middle of fall so i i do think i am a little bit late but i still wanted to give my two cents you know i get fomo pretty e easily so let's go ahead and dive into it these are just some books that i have read and that i would recommend and then i think fall into like the fall autumn if you will feeling the autumn vibe so let's go ahead and and start so the first book is actually a book that I read recently, which is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I am recommending this book specifically because it just has such a fall vibe. I'm not actually sure it ha like it's ha happening during fall. No, it doesn't even happen during fall. It happens in July. But when reading this, I still feel like it's a very like autumn vibe because it deals with like mystery it deals with uh suspense um the russian aesthetic also you know the old um 1800s uh russian aesthetic i think also just the cover kind of it just gives fall vibes you know so i would recommend this one this book is basically a murder mystery but from the perspective of the murderer so you kind of see how everyone around him is trying to figure out who the fuck um killed this woman but you know from the start that it's this guy and you're just kind of like following his life as he works up the courage to like confess i guess or i don't know it's a weird it's a weird journey um i think you'll have to read it for yourself but i would definitely recommend this on any like autumn to read list and then the next book uh, that I want to recommend is another classic. It is called Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. As you know, this is my favorite book of all time. So, um, or one of my favorite books of all time. So I highly recommend uh, just reading this in general. Like it doesn't have to be for autumn, but I just also think that this one fits the autumn theme. 
exactly because like it's in the horror genre and it has kind of like that dark academia feeling to it as well because the main character Victor Frankenstein is a student at his university and he conducts this experiment where he tries to make life artificial life out of different parts of different people don't mind the angle change, I just, the angle annoyed me, okay, just ignore it, it's fine. So yeah, I would really recommend this in the autumn uh, category as well because it has that mystery feeling to it as well. There's a sense of haunting from the creature that Victor creates and a general feeling of suspense as well as you read Victor's paranoia increase incrementally throughout the novel and it's just a really good read it's a really good read it's so good like the message and the like themes that it explores and the structure that it uses utilizes to convey the story is just genius so highly highly recommend uh frankenstein and especially for fall the next book that i want to recommend is hamlet by Shakespeare. I read this recently a couple of months ago and I would recommend this again because there's, you know, a tragedy in it. You can kind of sense that there's a theme in my list because it deals a lot with like horror and tragedy and sorrow and pain. Not that to say that all of these, well, all of these books kind of have <laughs> something along those lines. Like I don't think there are any happy books in on this list. I don't think I've ever read a happy book actually. So Hamlet, I would recommend this because of its inherent tragedy and also like the suspense that you feel throughout the plot. If you don't know what Hamlet is about, it is about um, this prince whose father just died and he has to uh, witness his um, father's brother marry his mother and take over the role as the king of the kingdom of uh, the kingdom of Denmark but he suspects pretty early on from uh, actually uh, meeting the ghost of his father that uh, the killer of his father was actually his own brother like his uncle and so he spends the whole um, play trying to expose his uncle for his crime. It's a pretty famous story, so I would be surprised if you haven't heard of it already, but very good, very tragic, has banger lines. It is a bit hard to follow, so I would definitely recommend like watching a live stage play at the same time as reading because most of them do like say the lines like verbatim so it's pretty easy to follow in that sense and i think the tone of like the way that they deliver the lines really help with understanding like the context of the scene and sometimes i think the set helps with that as well and i would especially recommend watching the um russian adaptation of hamlet you can find it on youtube i will link it link it in the description below definitely recommend this one because it is the most um, faithful to the original play by Shakespeare. So the next book that I want to recommend is Macbeth, another Shakespeare play. The reason I am recommending Macbeth is actually for the same reason as I'm recommending Hamlet. It's just like Shakespeare in general really fits into the theme of autumn it's like as I said before because of its association with like dark ac academia which is inherently you know, like an autumn, winter aesthetic. I think Macbeth is another one that really fits is because also of its tragedy. Uh, Macbeth is about this Scottish soldier who is prophesied to become king of Scotland and then you watch as his greed and his paranoia kind of overtake his personality and um, how it progresses throughout the plot. A really gruesome and again like it just fits the, the, the vibe and the tone of, of Autumn I think. And I would also recommend watching like a live play for this one as well. There isn't a Russian adaptation for this one unfortunately, um, but there is a really good uh, play by Ian McKellen and Judy Dench on YouTube. Also, I will link it in the description below, which I would highly recommend watching at the same time as like uh, reading Macbeth and the lines again, because they, they read the lines pretty verbatim. So um, yeah, I would highly recommend like Macbeth. I, I loved it when I read it a few months ago and I think you will love it as well. <laughs> Okay, so then the next book on the list is Dracula. But the reason that I am uh, recommending Dracula for the Autumn TBR 
is because it is the vampire book and vampires are generally associated with like autumn and fall and winter so why not you know start out your autumn experience with like the reading about count dracula and how he seduced all these women and sucked their blood you know I can't think of a better time, honestly. So I highly recommend this one and I also highly recommend annotating it at the same time. I had so much fun annotating my copy. I don't have it with me right now. It's actually back home in Europe, um, but I can show you like a clip here of uh, me showing you like all my annotations back when I lived in the Netherlands. Yeah, I would highly recommend uh, annotating it at the same time because it's just so fun. Like it's so, so fun. Like you get sucked into this mystery and all this like um, suspense as well. If you don't know what Dracula is about, it's kind of hard to explain actually now that I think about it because it's not really one plot. It's kind of like a series of plots that just happen uh, throughout the book um, but it is essentially about Count Dracula who is preying on humans by sucking their blood and turning them into vampires to be one of his wives and him killing people mostly. Speaking of vampires, I would also recommend Woman Eating by Claire Coda. I read this I think last year and although I wasn't very entertained by it, I think this is a very good book that's that's kind of like no thoughts only vibes kind of book. I feel like that's this book. I feel like this book is more vibes than it's thoughts. <laughs> this book is about the main character who is a secret vampire who has some catholic guilt and she spends the whole book if I remember correctly trying not to suck the blood of her neighbor that she thinks is kind of sexy. Definitely I would recommend this one to the catholic guilt girlies out there who have religious trauma and who see themselves as monsters. This book is for you. On the topic of like monstrous women being kind of weird, being kind of off-putting, um, the next book that I want to recommend is Our Wives Under the Sea. This book is also kind of autumn to me again because of like the horror element in it and because of like the mystery element in it because it's about um, the main character's wife coming back from an expedition under the sea and just being incredibly changed, doing some like off-putting behaviors like staying in the bathtub for hours at a time and vomiting water and um, stuff like that. So it's qu it's pretty like supernatural in that sense. Well, maybe not supernatural, but it's uh, kind of like magical realism. I gave it three stars as well, but a lot of people really enjoyed it uh, despite, you know, its flaws. So. You know, I think that you would also enjoy it if you love like kind of abstract plots and uh, kind of just vibes again. Like this is another book just like Woman Eating that is more vibes than its thoughts. And I think that the fall, like the autumn period is perfect for just vibes. You know, like if you just want to vibe and you don't really want to think because it's starting to get colder and thinking takes a lot of energy, which you need to preserve to keep warm you know, then this book is for you. Speaking of gay people who have a sort of off-putting partner, another recommendation I would present to you for your autumn TBR is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This is about, I'm pretty sure it takes place in France. And the main character is like bisexual, but he's like in denial about being bisexual until he literally meets this hunk at a bar and they hit it off and he becomes his boyfriend. But his boyfriend is severely mentally ill. And that's the whole book. <laughs> this book is for the people who are really into and really feeling like gay despair, maybe not despair, but like gay pain, gay sorrow, um, internalized like homophobia. I'm also pretty sure this one takes place during the summer, but it just has that fall vibe because of like the pain and the suffering and you know, everything like that. So I would definitely recommend this. It just gave me that vibe, you know? Speaking of gay despair and suffering and having a men mentally ill partner, damn, all of these really do fit a theme. Maybe I should have 
put them into categories. <laughs> okay, hi, I'm back. So just a little bit of an update. I have now put all of my recommendations into little categories because I realized that most of them actually fit pretty well into um, individual categories. Okay, so um, All Damn Darkness Wide by Sean Hewitt. This is a memoir about the author's experience being with a suicidal um, partner and how this has like affected their relationship and how it affected the author's life and his whole outlook on like relationships and uh, life in general. This fits the theme of gay suffering again because they were really suffering uh, during their relationship. And I think that again, it fits the theme because of its like mournful and very kind of demure uh, vibe to it, like demure tone throughout the, the text. So I, I would highly recommend this under the gay suffering if you're feeling for like a gay suffering book during your autumn. This is definitely one of them because I also love the way that he talked about mental illness and the morality of it and how, well, basically he, he argues that there is no morality in mental health or in mental illness and there is no morality in suicidality and that when you know partners say that you're the only reason that they're living is not for a malicious reason it might actually just be because that's the truth so i really enjoy like all of uh his insights into what this relationship taught him and how uh, it has changed the way he thinks about a lot of things the last book in the gay suffering category is the seven moons of molly almeida which is a book about the Sri Lankan civil war during the 70s or the 80s and the reason this fits under the gay suffering category is because the main character is a gay photographer who had taken pictures who had taken some very important pictures that he needed to get published and he kind of spends the whole book trying to convey to his friends through like the spiritual realm to find the pictures and publish them um, in order to like turn the tide in the in the civil war yeah and i just think that you know the the spirituality of it and the otherworldly feeling to the setting and the plot really uh conveys like this autumn atmosphere i also really enjoyed the writing style because it's written in the second person pronoun which is really unique and i think the author really pulled off very well so highly recommend this one as well there's a lot of suspense and and uh, mystery because he also doesn't remember how he died so there's a little bit of thriller in that sense of the plot okay then we get to the atmospheric autumn vibes so these are books that are not necessarily about pain or about like suffering but more so just have like that atmosphere of like autumn like it's more like the setting around them that makes it feel like autumn more so than the plot, if that makes sense. So the first one is The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. This is a literary book which follows the main character, Wan Long, and his family and how um, he sort of goes from a poor farmer to a very rich nobleman, I'm pretty sure. Like he becomes a nobleman where he owns several plots of land and he has people working for him and you kind of follow his family as his children grow up and get married and stuff like that. I don't know, I think it's honestly just like the farming aspect of it that really gives me the autumn vibes because it does describe like earth a lot. There's a lot of like field descriptions and farming descriptions and like like the crops that he that he's sowing and reaping and in general it just has this like, yeah, it just has this vibe. Like I know I've said vibe like a hundred thousand times throughout this video but it just it just fits okay i would highly recommend this because it's more down to earth no pun intended it's more like laid back in the sense that there's no really like suspense or thriller in it it is just about like following this man throughout his whole life and seeing how yeah he kind of builds himself up from scratch and you wouldn't think that it sounds as good as it is but the writing style just pulls you in like i really like the writing style it really kept me engaged throughout the whole book, so I think that it will do the same for you. The next book that I'm going to recommend is not 
as laid back as that one. So the good earth is more like a long saga, whereas elsewhere is like one big question mark. Like the next book that I'm going to recommend is called Elsewhere. Um, yeah, what's the genre called again? Contemplative literature or something? Oh, it is dystopian. Yeah, Elsewhere by Alexis Shaken is is um, the reason that I put this in atmospheric autumn vibes is again because of the the setting that it fits in. It's set in like this small town that's very you know how Dri District Twelve looks like in the Hunger Games movies. That's pretty much how I imagine this town that the main character is in. It's like very gray, it's very like one note, it's very generic, but it's also very dirty. I feel like it's like it's very earthly. There's a lot of like earth description as well. It's speculative in the sense that you don't really know what's going on and the main character also doesn't know what's going on and um, so they go on like this journey to find out what's going on and then you realize, oh, I know what's going on now. I would say I would recommend this book to people who is kind of feeling meh about their hometown. You, you get what I'm saying? Who are kind of like disillusioned with their hometown and their own family dynamics and who feel a certain type of way about their hometown. I can say I relate to it in that aspect, although I gave this like three stars, but I would still like recommend it again because of like the mystery and the thrilling aspect of like, ooh, I wonder what's going on and the commentary that it has on like your hometown and and the people who live there so i really enjoyed that aspect of it and i i also appreciate the the amount of thought that the author put into like the names for example of the characters another one that kind of has like uh that atmosphere is comfort me with apples this is kind of like an older book it was very popular a few years ago when um everyone on booktube was reading it i think that it's really good i think i gave it four stars or like 3.5 stars because it's essentially like a big mystery throughout the whole book like and you don't really realize what's going on until literally the end and that's when you figure out oh okay this is like a, a metaphor for something i don't know it's like a reference to something but basically like this book is about the main character she wakes up It's pretty short too, and I would say that the audiobook does a good job of like um, pulling you into the atmosphere of it. So I would recommend this for like the autumn TBR. And another one that uh, really fits this vibe is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This one fits because like it's also about suffering, but it's a very like specific teenage girl suffering. You get what I mean? Like it's, it can get very dark at times and sometimes it even gets like meta. I really enjoyed actually those parts and I felt like that um, most of the elements in the book were very good symbolisms of the girl's journey in accepting who she is. Or not who she is, but just accepting um, her circumstances and trying to make a better life for herself um, as she kind of goes through hardships. That makes it sound very generic. I, it's not generic at all. Like you, I don't, I think you will be a little bit shocked if you read this, but I would recommend this book for people who uh, have moved in their childhood and who really struggled to connect with the people around them and who struggled to adjust to the new life that they had and who just had not a good time when they moved. Like it also happened to me when I was 16, actually my family moved to um, Sydney, Australia, where I am right now. Yeah, that was not a good time for me. And I think that if I had read that book back then, it would have helped me in some, in some way. So I would read this book not if you're necessarily going through a move right now, but if you just have been going through a move sometime in like your teenage years or if you have some unresolved trauma from that, I would recommend this book to you.
Okay, we get to the next category, which is dark academia. I know I've talked a, lo a little bit about dark academia like early in this video, but now we have a whole specific category that fits. So not so much classic literature, like classic literature is part of the aesthetic of dark academia, but these recommendations are more so involved in dark academia or they are set in like that aesthetic. Does that make sense? So anyway, so the first one that I'm going to recommend is Vita Nostra. It's written by this Russian couple that I forget the name of, but it's on the cover here. This is very, like, this is a very abstract book. It's very hard to understand what the fuck is going on at any time in the book because it's, again, it's like very abstract. Basically, like, this, um, book is about the main character she is visited by a man who kind of threatens her to join his school because if she doesn't then bad things happen to her family and at this school she is going through a lot of weird tests that she doesn't really understand but in the end i think she kind of surpasses the tests and it's like all one big metaphor that kind of went over my head a little bit to be honest like i tried to read some reddit uh analyses which is when you know you've hit a whole new low i would still recommend this book because it's it's like kind of like the ultimate dark academia like it's pretentious and it takes place in a school that is kind of off-putting and kind of weird the other book that i, I would recommend under this list is If We Were Villains by ML Rio. This is another kind of classic dark academia book. It's not classic in the sense that it's old, but it's like a classic in the sense that pretty much since its release, it's been put in all the dark academia lists. And that's because it is basically like a, it is a, a commentary on dark academia and especially Shakespeare as a part of that aesthetic. I think it does it really, really well. When I read it, I hadn't read any Shakespeare. So all the Shakespeare references just went over my head. But I think if I read it now, actually, I don't know if I would appreciate it more or less. I actually don't know. Cause I think part of the reason why I enjoyed it so much was because because I didn't really know that much about Shakespeare, but I'm not sure too much about that. But it is, yeah, it is just, you know, a commentary on the dark academia. It is also partly, I actually don't know if it's inspired by The Secret History by Donna Tartt, but if we compare it to The Secret History in the way that Greek literature and just Greece in general is used as a commentary device in the secret history the same way Shakespeare is like the focal point of the commentary in If We Were Villains. So I think that was a pretty good idea and I would say that she executed it pretty well and I really enjoyed um, actually the whole book. I think it could have said a bit more uh, like I put in a bit more commentary but it's still a pretty good contender for the dark academia genre and category. The next recommendation that I want you to read that I think fits under the dark academia even though it doesn't technically fit, like it doesn't take place in a school for most of the book is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I'm recommending this because like it does take place in the school like in the beginning of the book and then after that it's you kind of like leave school but it just has that vibe i don't know it's it's a dystopian novel like a contemporary dystopian novel about how in in this universe we kind of make artificial humans for them to be organ donors and for some reason some of them are asexual i don't know it's like a whole like what it means to be human um novel i was also kind of feeling lukewarm about it but i think it's it fits in the dark academia vibe because of like the the whole oh there's something bigger going on at this place that we that we know and that we think and then uh the last recommendation in the dark academia genre is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a horror novel about the main character who pretty much sees just like a horror movie play out in front of her in her town. And because she is obsessed with horror movies, she sees the tropes play out before anyone else. Dark Academia, because she is technically going to school and like I think every other chapter is like an assignment of hers where she talks about horror movies and how it relates to like the town that she's in and what's happening, which I thought was pretty funny, but I, I would recommend it. I really enjoyed reading this book. I enjoy like Stephen Graham Jones's um, books in general.
Okay, now we get to the last category, which is called the ethnic experience. And you will see why when you see all the books that I am recommending in this category. So the first book that I'm going to recommend is Mexican Gothic. Like you can kind of tell why I called this category the ethnic experience just from that book alone. This category is all about horror, but make it ethnic. Make the bad people like the white people in the book. Actually, I don't even need to explain anything else. Like all of these books are pretty much that. Not so much uh, the next book that I'm going to recommend, but it is definitely for Mexican Gothic because this is about the main character who gets a call from her cousin or like a letter or something who asks her to come and live with her at her husband's house because there's some weird shit going on and her family hasn't heard from her in a while. So either she gets a letter from her cousin telling her to come or she is sent by her family, I actually don't remember. But she uh, goes to that house and she realizes pretty early on that something fucking weird is going on at that house. Like it reminds me a lot of Crimson Peak actually, if you've seen that movie. And I think it was inspired by that movie because it has a lot of like the same elements and the same themes, but it's like specifically commentary on like eugenics and like white supremacy. So I love that. I love that aspect of it. And that's why I think it's such a good like autumn read because it gives you like this kind of creepy feeling um like creepy crawly feeling on your arms and you kind of like disgusted and you know suspend um so definitely recommend this one if you're feeling for like a thriller that is specifically focused on like racial commentary the next recommendation kind of falls into this category as well not so much in the racist sense but more so in the like specific cultural myth uh, mythologies that are involved so this book is called the only good indians by stephen graham jones um this book is about this man who went out to hunt i think elk or deer at one point with his friends and they shot a bunch of deer elk and uh it is like coming back to haunt him all these years later i think because in Ma native american mythology shooting elk is like a bad omen the that whole experience is coming back to haunt him and slowly like killing everyone around him so definitely falls into like the ethnic experience and then we have the last book which is called the moon of the crested snow this definitely fits the, this category the same way mexican gothic fits it because even though like it's not a period piece it's pretty contemporary but it basically answers the question like what would happen if the apocalypse happened in our current life and how would this affect specifically like the the native americans so basically this is about like the main character all of a sudden to uh from his community come back from school in a panic because the whole town has like lost electricity they've lost water they've lost the food and they came back to the like the community that they all live in because i think it wasn't as affected by the apocalypse like nobody knew that it was happening until literally like the guys came back i'm pretty sure either that or like they also lost electricity but they weren't really sure like why there is kind of like a suspense in this book in the sense that um, one day like this group of white men come and like ask for like they ask for them to share their resources with them because they they don't have anywhere else to go and otherwise they will starve so there is a little bit of tension there like it definitely has some racial commentary on it as well but yeah so those are all of the books that i would recommend for reading in the fall they all have their own categories you can kind of go through them one by one again if you want but these are kind of like the books that i felt have the most autumn vibe to them that i have read uh before so i would recommend all of these of course because i love them or i really enjoyed them and yeah that's really it for this video i know it is a bit late but i hope that you will get something from it anyway and i will see you guys in the next video maybe who knows i may never come back from my walk i feel like i need that i feel like i'm too much on the internet to be honest anyway let's hope that happens for me okay let's hope i wake up and i just i get so mesmerized by the blue sky that i never touch a keyboard ever again but yeah wish me luck and i'll see you guys next time bye